Is it right or wrong to have a boyfriend or girlfriend as a Christian? Growing up as a Christian single, I heard the church talk about do not have a boyfriend. And then if you're seen around the opposite sex, it's kind of like it's already an impression that something is going on. You're doing something wrong. You are committing a sin. So, and that is kind of disturbing. You are making me avoid talking to the opposite sex. If I'm not to do this, give me a reason. Or if I'm to do it, tell me how to do it right. Having a boyfriend or girlfriend is not what is wrong. But what you choose to do in that relationship is what will make it either right or wrong. So the Bible did not say you should not have a boyfriend or girlfriend. But then it taught that you should not commit sexual immorality. And I know the church has been on the fear aspect of if you allow them to get together, there's a possibility that they will do this without you knowing. But the truth is, in reality, it's happening. A lot of Christian young people are already committing sexual sin. And some of them are even becoming okay with it. It's like when there's a law put on something, it feels like you're blocking someone from doing something that is, might be good for them. Oh, let me put this right. If there's either a law, a rule, a principle, a regulation that is not clearly stated for people to know why am I told not to do this, it's very possible for one to feel like you're trying to hinder me from getting something good. You're stopping me from getting something. So when you tell people do not have a boyfriend or girlfriend, they feel like this is just a mindset that the church is trying to portray. I came to a point in my life that I started saying to myself, I'm not seeing anything wrong because I have a girlfriend. But then what will make it either wrong or right will be what I do in the context of that relationship that I choose. The Bible tells us, flee youthful lust. Youthful lust is the desire for sexual intimacy. And every young person kind of have that because biologically we are connected that way. When you make a, a law out of this, do not have a girlfriend or a boyfriend. It now stems, stems a perception in people's mind that the only reason you have a girlfriend or boyfriend is to have sex, which is which, which plays along to what the culture and, and the secular world says. You know, but then as a Christian, is there no room to have a good companionship without bad intentions and bad feelings coming in? So which then calls attention to an accountability of a Christian's personal life and relationship with God, which is, as a Christian, it's your personal responsibility to be accountable to keeping to God's standard and honoring God and living for God and allowing the love of God to overflow in your heart. Run away from anything that stimulates youthful lust. The Bible says anything. It did not say someone. Because some are once we have the idea of thinking that meeting a girlfriend or a boyfriend will stimulate sinful laws. We are sexualizing the person in a way. It behooves you, if you get to be with someone, you should define boundaries. If you get to love someone, which is something that somehow will happen. What the Bible says, run away from anything that stimulates youthful laws. So here the Bible gives you what to run away from and what to run to. It says anything, anything which is in the context of even having a relationship, which I said that it is not wrong to have a relationship or to have a boyfriend or girlfriend, but what you do there. So it should be in the context of me having a boyfriend or girlfriend, anything that would stimulate youthful lust, anything that will awaken love before it's time, anything that will lead me to disobey God or dishonor God, I should run away from this thing. But mark what it says, run to, pursue righteous living. Faithfulness, love. The love here talks about agape love, which is unconditional love. You know, that's the love that God has towards us. But if we can receive that love from God, we can then portray it to others, which means I can have a girlfriend and not feel like I need to sleep with her and not feel like she needs to prove love to me by having sex with me. Because sex, having sex in a relationship does not prove love. It does not define love. It does not even speak to love. In the other aspects, you can actually speak to lust. So, Pursue love, which means I can have a good relationship that honors God. Then I pursue a godly love that I'm seeing this person through the eyes of God as God sees them and loving them unconditionally, being of help to them and trying to help each other. Enjoy the companionship of those who call on the Lord with pure hearts. So now it talks about your motive. Why do I want this? So point number two, if you choose to have a relationship, ask yourself why? 
ask yourself why what's the motive why do i want this because the bible talks about pursuing love righteousness and faithfulness enjoying companionship with people that call on the lord with a pure heart is your heart pure are you having a pure motive are you having a pure heart towards i want the relationship or is there some hidden motive as a christian you want to get with a christian single a christian boy or guy you want to get with a christian lady and then you are deceiving her you don't want sex you want it to be pure to honor god but then at the end of the day in the middle of a relationship you're already looking for sex you're already trying to mislead each other or whichever way each of you are trying to mislead each other are you choosing a relationship because other people have relationship and you don't want to feel left out are you choosing one because you need some validation are you choosing one because you are insecure because if you are doing it for those reasons then you are doing it on the wrong platform and with the wrong motive not with pure motives because if you get to be with another christian single whom you feel affection towards and you decide to get into a relationship it should be we should help each other grow to know god and become better come our better selves because it's not a place that you should get into and want to break someone break their character verbally abuse at all telling back to what the church has said over time regarding this about avoiding it totally no one could be forced to do what he or she does not want to do and they would have a lasting experience in that like the church telling you do not have a girlfriend or boyfriend it's not lasting people will only come pretending when we come to church we behave like we have nothing going on but then we are still doing it having it and then we might even go ahead and do everything that's wrong since church has provided a platform for us to pretend then we come pretending but if church would provide an open platform like i know that this is the reality which is you may get to have a boyfriend or a girlfriend but then why do you want this define the motive and help them build a good perception towards this instead of the negative perception of like oh if you get to have a boyfriend or girlfriend you will get to disobey god and then once the temptation comes you may not be able to help yourself but the truth is it's possible that you can have one and still honor god with it this is to say if you chose to want to be in a relationship you should choose to have it right with the right motives number three the idea of the church saying do not have a girlfriend or boyfriend already stains on people's mind the perception that it is not possible to have a boyfriend or girlfriend without something happening that is not possible to have a boyfriend or girlfriend without sex happening i know that feelings may occur when it has to do with the relationship between opposite sex but feeling occurring does not mean that it should lead to committing sin because if you have feeling it doesn't mean it's sin but then what do you choose to do with the feeling you have the feeling of attraction towards something or arousal does not mean that you have sinned but then what do you choose to do intentionally with that feeling is what will lead to either sin or not if you choose to ask god for self-control and you control that feeling put it in the parameter in the right parameter then it won't lead to sin but if you try to exercise that feeling to fulfill it then you actually will be led to sin and you're not to be controlled by your feelings you have to be in control of your feelings so in this point for us not to get to a point of having this myth corrupt our mindset as christians we need to know that there is a possibility of having a good friendship with an opposite sex or anybody at all without ulterior motives without ulterior motives because I found it that a lot of people believe that it's no, it's not possible. It's not possible. How can you be with someone and then you will not have sex? No, it's a girl, fine girl, or whatever. Or the guy, how can you think that you can be with a guy and then you don't have sex? You'll be in a relationship and you don't have sex. As Christians, that shouldn't be what we believe and think. Because already we know the standard in the scripture is we should not commit sexual immorality. So then it should behoove us to learn how can we help ourselves dealing with feelings or with desires sometimes we can't help but have desires for people and then these desires most times is based on the attractiveness or this feeling of connection that we feel towards people so dealing with the desires that you may have towards someone when you feel something for someone it does not mean love at first it may be a range of emotions that you may not have the right word for it 
But then people get to have such feelings for someone and immediately they feel like, oh, it's love. No, how do you come to just define it as love? Because love in itself is not a feeling. Yeah, it's more than a feeling. But feeling is a part of it, which means feeling is a part of the connection for love to happen. But then love in itself is not the feeling. So when you get to have feeling for someone for the first time, how come that you just think that this is love? No, you cannot just portray that you have feelings for someone because you are attracted to them. Maybe physically, emotionally, intellectually, or something about them that just intrigues you and makes you like them the more. So, but then each of the feeling you have, each of this feeling that you have is a signal that is just telling you that there's a connection. There's something about you that is connected to this person. Also, there's something about this person that is connected to you. It's your place to intentionally try to sit down, sit yourself down and define what is this feeling? Is it admiration? Because sometimes you crush on people and you don't know what it is. You think you should go have sex with them because you feel some cheesy feelings. No, but then it could be admiration or whatever it could be. Sit down and define it and then help yourself. You can let the person know, look, this is what I'm feeling towards you, but I don't want to define it to put it in the wrong way. You can tell it, but allow time so that you can define it for yourself before you, if it's still strong after thinking it through, you can let the person know, look, I'm feeling this way. But then you should not expect a favorable response from the person because it may not be the same thing so it could help you once you let it out release this feeling it could help you be more relaxed because now it's not just in your head stop there you've said it out and then whatever happens to it you're done with it you should be fine with whatever response you get to have you should not be so indignant that you want to hear a good response like you should tell me you love me <laughs> it would then be an intentional thing that you decide to walk through, maybe to get to have friendships with this person. Thank you for watching this video. I hope this video has been a blessing to you. I hope you love the content in this video. I would like to hear from you in the comment section. What do you do when you feel something towards someone? Let me hear from you in the comment section. And if you have anything to add to this video, any thought to express or anything that has spoken to you, I would like to talk with you more in the comment section. I am Uem Apan. This is my YouTube channel. Please subscribe to this channel. It's going to help me like this video, share it to people, and then see you in the next video. Bye. You like my smile? <laughs>